Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Green Bateau Mythic Plus Guide for Season 1 in The War Within. In this video, we'll be going through the most important boss and trash mechanics in the dungeon. At the start of the dungeon, you're gonna fight some earth callers that are going to cast earth bolts. Interrupt as many of these as you can, but make sure to save an interrupt for their mass tremor, as it does heavy AoE damage to everybody in your party while the earth bolts are single target. The Brutes are going to slap your tank and cast Obsidian Stomp, which is swirlies on the ground that you need to dodge. And when the big destroyer Drake casts Umbra Went, you're going to get pushed back, so make sure your back is towards the wall and not towards the Abyss in the middle, as you die if you get pushed there. He's also going to cast Twilight Flame, random dot on a target that not only does damage but also leaves puddles behind, so make sure to move to the side if you get this. Some of the packs also have Overseers, that are going to put a stacking debuff on your tank, increasing the damage they take, and they're also going to cast Reckless Tactic that increases the damage that they do, but also the damage they take. This affects all the mobs around them, and it's up to you to decide whether or not you want to purge it. After a few pulls, you get to mount a Drake and bomb the remaining trash before the first boss. You have two abilities, your one ability does a lot of damage but only has five charges, while the two ability you can spam indefinitely, but it does much less damage. You do only one lap of the area, so do as much damage as you can because you have to kill the remaining trash after you land. The first boss is General Umbres, he's going to cast Commanding Roar, doing a little bit of AoE damage and summoning drakes that are going to bombard the area. Make sure to move to the non-purple area in order not to get one-shotted. Rock Spike puts circles around the players that explode, so make sure to spread out and try to drop the puddles from them towards the edge of the room because they will remain there for the remainder of the fight. The boss also has a tank buster that leaves a bleed on them and these mechanics keep repeating until you manage to kill it. The next area features some Molten Giants which are going to cast Molten Wake, heavy AoE damage to everybody in your party with a debuff that increases the fire damage taken, which means that you should not get hit by the fire swirlies that are going to fire from the middle of the room. The Beguliars are going to cast Shadow Flame Bolt and Seer Mind, try to interrupt both, the first one does single target damage while Seer Mind stuns the target as well, so it should have higher priority in your interrupt list. The Flame Renders are going to leave a stacking dot on your tank and they're also going to cast a huge frontal called Blazing Shadow. If you don't CC them to interrupt that, it leaves a huge fiery area on the ground that you need to avoid. The second boss is Forge Master Trongus, who's going to use different weapons throughout the fight. Every time he forges a new weapon, the whole party takes AoE damage for 4 seconds, so be prepared to use defensives at that point. First, he's going to forge an axe, which allows him to cast a huge front throw to one of the players in your party. You wanna bait that towards the edges of the arena, as it leaves a huge area denial after it casts, which remains there until the end of the fight. After a little bit more AoE, he forges swords which allows him to cast Molten Flurry. This smacks your tank and puts Molten Spark to the rest of the players, which is a ticking dot that leaves puddles behind after it expires, and they also remain there until the end of the fight, so you want to drop them close to the edges as well. After he forges the maze, he gets big and enraged. For 10 seconds, at this point your tank needs to kite him, and he's gonna leave Fire Trail behind, which is another area denial, so you need to manage your space very carefully during this fight. After the mace expires, he forges the axe again and everything repeats until you manage to kill him. The next area introduces Lava Benders, which have a huge frontal that you need to dodge, as it also stuns apart from doing damage. They're also going to cast Dark Eruption, which does AoE damage to everybody in your party and puts fiery circles around some of the players, which explode for additional damage so you need to spread out. They're also going to channel Ascension, pulsing AoE damage to everybody in your party and doing even more in a small area around them. This area also features Twilight Warlocks that are going to cast Enveloping Shadow. This is a curse that does taking damage and also puts a healing absorb shield on the target, so if you cannot dispel it, you have to heal through it. In order to get to the next boss, you have to kill several packs, which feature a mix of many of the mobs that we have already seen in the dungeon. The third boss is Draga Shadow Burner, who is going to cast Shadow Flame Bolts in phase 1, interrupt those as much as you can. She's also going to summon portals that explode for a bit of AoE damage and summon an ad that fixates a player. You can CC, slow down and cleave the ad, but you have to make sure that it doesn't reach its target, otherwise it's going to just wipe you. 
She's also going to cast Curse of Entropy to treat different players, doing some upfront damage and leaving a healing absorb shield on them that you can either dispel or heal through. At 1% health she transforms into a dragon and phase 2 starts. All the mechanics so far will keep happening but now she's going to summon two portals and you're going to have two adds fixating the players that you need to cleave down. There's two new mechanics, Twilight Buffet knocks everybody back doing damage and leaving swirlies behind. You want to drop these close to the edge so you have more space to kite the adds. The other new mechanic is a huge frontal that you need to dodge and all of that continues until the dragon reaches 50% health which is when the fight ends and you win. The last area introduces a new type of trash mob, Faceless Corruptor. He's going to do a channel called Corrupt. It does a ton of damage, so be ready to use a defensive if you're the target. And these mobs are also going to cast Mind Piercer, which is a bunch of swirlies on the ground that you need to dodge. The last boss is Aerodax. He's going to cast Voice Surge, pushing you back, doing heavy AoE shadow damage to everybody in your party and summoning tentacles on the ground. Make sure not to walk on top of them because you're going to get stunned and this is probably going to kill you for the next mechanic called Shadow Gale. He converges the shadows around him, collapsing everything into a small circle that you need to stay inside. And at the same time he's going to cast Abuso Corruption, which marks three players with shadow circles, forcing you to spread out in the small area that remains from the map. He also has a Tank Buster and a Void Infusion cast that summons whelps from the nearby eggs. When you kill those adds, they leave a stacking debuff on you, increasing the shadow damage that you take for 15 seconds. So you want to stagger killing them for after the Void Surge finishes casting so you don't take increased shadow damage from it. Rinse and repeat until you kill the boss and successfully finish Grim Batal. You can also consider subscribing for more Mythic Plus content and the rest of the Mythic Plus dungeon guides for Season 1 in The War Within. I'll see you there, now get out of here.